Governor DeSantis is packaging himself as a basically more extreme version of Donald Trump. He would say more conservative, whether it's with his positions on abortion, crime, the border, or a host of other issues. But this strategy came with a very tough question. Can he really convince GOP and MAGA voters that Donald Trump is too liberal? Well, he's obviously attacking me from the left. I mean, I think he's attacked me for opposing an amnesty bill. Uh, he wanted to amnesty 2 million illegal aliens in 2018 when he was president. I opposed him on that because I'm opposed to amnesty. But Trump is just way, way ahead now in the polls. I mean, DeSantis trails Trump even after multiple indictments by 30 percentage points, and some, sometimes it appears to be even more. This is according to 538. Despite a lot of hype, the shine on DeSantis has certainly worn off, even though he's raised $20 million since entering the race. His donors beginning to question the campaign, particularly his strategy, as mega-donors are continuing to assess the field. And now even the conservative media changing its tune on him. The New York Times reporting that Rupert Murdoch is off the DeSantis bandwagon and now prefers Glenn Youngkin instead. Joining me now is John Ziegler, conservative commentator and host of the Death of Journalism podcast. John, thanks for coming back on the program. Appreciate it. Look, you have supported DeSantis for a while now, but it just seems this strategy of trying to outflank Trump from the right has been a bit of a disaster, no? Well, let me first make a distinction. I still support Ron DeSantis. <laughs> I'm just willing to acknowledge reality. Uh, you know I'm a reality guy, you and are. I don't think that there's much of a chance that DeSantis is going to win this. I'm not positive, Dan. He ever could have won this because while you look at this through a political prism, and I think there is validity to that, especially on the abortion issue. I think the six week abortion ban in Florida basically ended any hope in New Hampshire where independent voters still matter in a Republican primary. But I think that that actually helped the Sanders in Iowa and South Carolina. I look at this as everything being about Donald Trump. I strongly believe that when it comes to Republican politics, it's all about Trump. That's what your great last segment was all about. It was really all about pleasing Donald Trump. And there are three groups in the Republican primary. There are the Trump cultists, the Trump likers, and the never Trumpers. I've been a never Trumper since the very beginning. DeSantis thought he had that group nailed down because of his big victory in 2022 and his fantastic COVID response. He has taken them for granted, and he's not going after Trump at all. And I think he has suffered because of that. And I think Chris Christie and others are starting to take that track. The middle group, the Trump likers, aren't interested. And it's not because of politics. It's because they have rallied around Donald Trump because of the two indictments and because there is a medium prism on both the left and the right that plays very much into Donald Trump's hands. In fact, I believe that Tucker Carlson is the MVP of the Trump campaign. And I've said this previously on your show. I predicted, in fact, the night that he got fired, that it was going to be very, very good for Donald Trump. And I think the entire media dynamic plays right into Donald Trump's hands. And this was a bridge that DeSantis tried to, to the gap that he tried to bridge that I'm not sure was ever really bridgeable. And he has failed because of bad strategy and bad circumstances. But DeSantis is a, blaming the media. He says, well, if I think if you look at the people like the corporate media, who are they going after? Who do they not want to be the nominee? And he's basically suggesting <clears throat> that the corporate media is going after him because the corporate media is afraid that he can actually win um, they're probably going after him because he's now positioning himself to the right of Trump. I think he actually could have gotten a surprising amount of corporate media support from the people who don't like Trump if his position was even just somewhat more moderate. Well, Dan, I would, I would really love to agree with you on that. I, I wish that was the truth. <laughs> but let's be, let's be clear. Let's be clear. DeSantis' number one uh, calling card is his reaction to COVID. Which side is the media on with regard to the COVID issue? They don't want accountability on COVID. They don't want to have their record compared to Ron DeSantis' record. They are very happy to see Ron DeSantis flame out in the primary because it saves them from a general election that will be relitigating in large part the COVID response, which is something the news media does not want at all, and rightfully so, because DeSantis was much more right than they were. And as far as Trump is concerned, Dan, you know very well, everybody that says they hate Donald Trump loves him in the general election in the media because he gives ratings, he gives content, and he very likely gives Joe Biden and Kamala Harris four, maybe 12 more years. <laughs> John Ziegler, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Oh, coming yeah. up.